Morning, my name is Audrey. I am Stitchy Witch 42 and I'm coming to you from Silverton, Oregon. It is Tuesday morning, September 12th, and I have a finish and I am really excited about this finish. But I would like to tell you a little bit about how I came to stitch this before I actually show it to you. So I'm going to take you back in time. I'm going to take you back to when I was seven years old. My dad was in the Air Force. I grew up in a military family. I have an older sister, Patty. She is eight years older than me. She was born in Denver, Colorado. I have a brother, George, who is four years older than me. He was born in Moses Lake, Washington. I was born in Heacham, England. And my younger sister, Erica, who is seven years younger, was born in Portland, Oregon, which is where I grew up. So when I was seven years old, we are sitting around the dining room table and my brother George and sister Patty are talking about this book that George had been reading. And it had dwarves and elves and wizards and dragons and something called a hobbit. And I piped up with, I wanna read that book. And my 15 year old sister Patty to my seven year old self said, you wouldn't understand. Well, that year for Christmas, my parents got me the Hobbit and the trilogy, The Lord of the Rings, and I devoured that book. I was an avid reader and I just dived in and read it and that book changed my life forever. So the following summer, my brother George, he's now 12, he was in the Boy Scouts and he had to make a project to earn a badge. What he came home with was a wooden sword. It wasn't anything fancy but it caught my attention and I wanted that sword. I really, really wanted that sword, but he didn't give it to me. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit. George is now 18. He is leaving home to go into the army and I go upstairs to clean out his room so that I can move into it and there's the sword. So I left it in my bedroom. When I moved out, when I was 18, to my first home, I took that sword with me. And every house that I have lived in, since I left my childhood home, that sword has gone with me. It has sat in the corner of a room, it has been in the closet, but it has always been there, waiting to be incorporated into my decor some way, somehow. We're gonna fast forward again. This time, it's my son, Philip, who is 18, and he is getting ready to go into the Navy. I was having a difficult time with this. Uh, he was the last of my children to be leaving home, and I was having a really hard time with it. So to distract myself, I decided that I wanted to turn his bedroom into a library guest room, storage area. Now we have a long living room and Philip's room is directly above it and it's as long as our living room but it has two levels. So my idea was that the front lower level would be the library. There would be a divider wall where, the step, where it stepped up and then there would be a door going through that divider wall and the storage area behind it. But what to make this room look like. Well, I love gardening, and for a while I thought I could do a garden theme up there, but quickly dismissed that because it just, that's not a library. I grew up reading Agatha Christie, and in my mind, a library is a British library. It has tall walls and floor to ceiling bookshelves and it's dark oak paneling and that won't work upstairs because it has knee walls and a sloped ceiling and if I painted it dark it would be a dungeon. But then one day when I was driving around and running some errands this idea popped into my head and I thought yeah I can do that. So I called home and Philip answered the phone this is before he went into the Navy. And I said, what do you think of this idea? And he goes, yeah, Mom, I really like that. And I said, good, put your dad on the phone. So Mark gets on the phone 
and I said, honey, I figured it out. I want to turn Philip's room into a Hobbit library. I want the divider wall to be bookcase, and I want a round Hobbit door to pass through to get to the storage area behind it. A little bit about Mark's background. His grandfather painted houses. He has an uncle who owns a construction company, and when Mark was a teenager, he was learning how to build houses. His father worked in the heating industry and worked with sheet metal. And for 14 years, Mark himself had his own business making handmade knives. And he did beautiful, beautiful work. Draw a picture, go out to the shop, and create what he drew. He's a very, very talented man, very hands-on man. He's rebuilding our house one room at a time, and he's doing fantastic work. So when I told him that I wanted a Hobbit library with a bookcase wall and a round Hobbit door, and he replied, I don't know how to make a round door. My reply to him was, if anybody can do it, you can. And he did. It's fabulous. But that's not why we're here. We're here to talk cross stitch. One of the groups that I belong to on Facebook is a cross stitch group called Cross Stitch Addicts, A-D-D-I-C-T-S. There is a woman in the group who lives in the Ukraine who is a designer. And every now and then she posts pictures of her designs. And she posted this one. And as soon as I saw it, I had to have it. I mean, I had to have it. I contacted her, figured out, had to pay her through PayPal, which is attached to my husband's email. So do the transaction. Later on in the day, I go check his email. There's no pattern. So I contacted her again. I said it didn't show up. She goes, do you have another email? I gave her mine. She said, okay, I'll send it again. I checked it later. No pattern. So I contacted her again. I said, I don't understand what's happening, why it's not coming through. I've checked both emails. I've checked the spam folders in both emails. It hasn't come through. So this time she sent it to me through Facebook Messenger and I got it. Download the PDF. I have my pattern. The pattern's name, Evening in the Shire. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So now that I have the pattern, I know what kind of fabric I have to get. She recommended 14 count Ada, and I like working on Ada. I like working on all fabrics, but you know, I like Ada. And after watching Floss Tube so many times, I had heard about all these wonderful people who dyed fabric, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna give it a try. I went to the website for Fabric by Stephanie and I'm looking at the different fabrics that she has there, and I found two colors that I thought would be perfect for Evening in the Shire. Ordered them, they arrived fairly quickly. I was happy about that. Had my flosses ready, I used the recommended colors except for one. I used a variegated uh, Weeks Dye Work threads for the windows because I wanted more of a color that looked like there was flickering firelight behind it. When I got the fabrics, I looked at the two of them and I had ordered two completely different colors, but they looked almost exactly alike. That was fine. Um, I liked both of them. It was then just choosing which one to use and the one I chose to use was Ocean Tides. So I'm going to show you Evening in the Shire. I think this is gorgeous. Yeah, you're right. You're going to get glare no matter how you turn this thing. This is Evening in the Shire. It is on 14 count. Ada, Ocean Tides, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. 
gorgeous, unbelievably gorgeous. The pattern only has four pages. The first two pages show you where to do all the half and full stitches. And it doesn't, it's not full coverage by any mean. There's full stitches here and here and here and here and here and a little bit here and some over here and here. They're all over the place. The other two pages of the pattern is the back stitch, the detail work, all the leaves and the steps and the stones. And what I discovered with the pattern is that the pattern, that design, the, the back stitching, doesn't quite match up with the holes on Ada. If you used a different fabric, you might be able to make it more exact to what she designed. I chose to use it as a guideline and I made my backstitching um, fit the Ada. So this is Evening in the Shire. I am just absolutely thrilled with it. And I took it down last Tuesday, the 5th, to Silverton Art and Frame to have them um, frame it for me. The frame I had several years ago, Mark had gone to a garage sale and found this big box of these frames. They were all unfinished and he paid $10 for this box of frames. And I have used them on so many different pieces around the house. And so virtually this frame cost me nothing. Uh, she helped me to pick out the mat for it. Um, we picked out the mat to bring out the color up here in the roof line of the house. And they called me Friday morning. They had it three days, three days, and it was done. And I am just tickled with how it looks. Evening in the Shire. So that's it. That's my finished piece that I wanted to show everybody. Um, I am going to pause my video for a moment and I am going to head upstairs to the library. So if you want to come with me and see the Hobbit Library, let's take a trip. So here we are, we're upstairs. This is the doorway going into the Hobbit Library. And I'm gonna try to do this so that you can see as we go in. That is my round Hobbit door. Mark did a fabulous job for me and it opens in three places. It opens in the center to pass through directly, sorry, to pass through directly into the room behind it and then both edges of the door open up so that I can access the bookshelves behind it. I am slowly going to pan around the room and I'm doing this standing behind the camera so I have no idea what you're seeing, but here you can see I've already got my evening in the Shire on the wall and I'm going to pan around a little bit more and there it is. That is the sword that my brother made when he was 12 years old. That is the sword that I wanted and I carried around with me from house to house to house until I finally had a room that was designed around this sword. When we got the room done, we had all of our family members over to see it. And when my brother came over, I showed him that I had his sword. And 30 plus years after I had 
taken it from his room, he finally gave it to me. So this was the inspiration for this room. This was the reason why I needed to do Evening in the Shire. Thank you all again for watching. Thank you for watching my first video. Um, this is an adventure all on its own, and I'm kind of enjoying it all. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you leave comments, and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.